it's time for Growing Hope, the show determined to grow up hearts open to pursue the extraordinary. Because you are extraordinary! And now, it's your host, Catherine Lang. Hello there, and welcome to Growing Hope. I am Catherine Lang, Hope Smith Extraordinaire, helping to guide us through this path to build a foundation of hope that's going to get us through. And if ever we needed a foundation of hope, it is right now. <laughs> Just this morning, I have been bombarded with negatives from my family, negatives from social media, and negatives from the environment. The weather's weird. The people around me are weird. <laughs> the society in general is just plain weird. We need hope if we're going to make it through. We have spent the last several days talking about how to have hope, to hold tight to hope, when we are going through those hopeless times, when things are just not the way we wanted them to be, or not the way we expected them to be, <laughs> or not the way they should be. That's when we have to find hope and hold tight to hope. Because even, remember, even a little bitty seed of hope, any, any, any hope will push away the darkness. So when we hold tight to that hope, we begin to make a way for us to get through. Now, the first point was to make time for God. The second point was to smile. It's one of my favorite. The third point was to hold tight to the promise the fourth one, fourth point, was to make room for the tears, allow for those tears to come. Remember, salt is healing. Till, tears are the healing flow. And finally, the fifth point, make God last. When we put God first in our lives, and then we find time to put God last in our lives, it's going to get us through that next step. Uh, we went through some craziness yesterday. <laughs> Actually, we've been going through some craziness since about April, but yesterday kind of pushed it over the edge. And we're in a, t a tiny, it's not exactly a tiny home, but it's 1,300 square feet. It's two levels, two bedrooms upstairs, one bedroom downstairs, uh, dining room, kitchen, living room area all in one. So we found a leak downstairs the owner we're, we're in temporary housing so the owner came in and started repairs which meant the kitchen area of the downstairs room was blocked off well yesterday the repairs were done so it was time to mud and paint which meant all of downstairs needed to be painted which meant all of downstairs was now out of um, use for us so my husband um, and I were making use of the upstairs area, and he comes up and says, ah, they, should just, they should just push us into one room. <laughs> See, words have power. Be careful how you use your words, because no sooner had he got it out of his mouth than the workers came upstairs to repair the, the patch in the closet, to paint the patch in the closet. So now we really were literally in one room in the house. <laughs> I, I, I tried, I really tried not to laugh, but I didn't do a good job. I found humor in the situation, and that was the hope that I needed to, to, to kind of make it through. I mean, it was a crazy day. Uh, unfortunately, my husband did not find humor in my humor, <laughs> which is often what happens when one of us is struggling through those hopeless moments to, to find that hope. We get annoyed at people who have hope. And we do that because of our personal emotions, our personal feelings. Which is why it's important to bookend your day with God. God at the beginning, God at the end. And it's going to look different for different people. Um, my husband can do his reading at night. My dad can do his reading at night. I'm going to fall asleep if I try to do my reading at night. My scripture reading. Now, I can read a good fiction book, but I know it's okay. I don't have a particular page I have to get to. When I'm doing my scripture reading, I have particular readings that I want to do. So my husband does sometimes does his reading at night. My dad always does reading at night. But I focus on gratitudes. That's my big turn-to-God moment. 
I know that I need to find a way, find my way to put God at a, at a full attention before I go to bed at night. And instead of reading my fiction book, maybe I write a gratitude paragraph. That would probably put me in a way better mindset and I would sleep better at night. So the whole idea is to get your mind and your heart focused back in, honed back in on what God is doing in your life and for your life. You know, remembering the promises, um, looking for the gratitudes of the day, finding the strength in the relationship that you have with God. So the more ways that we can find to put God last in our day, first and last in our day, the, the stronger we're going to be to start the next day. The more anchored we are in who God is and what God has promised and how he is showing himself in our journey, the bolder we're going to be in that journey. So how can you make God last in your day? I would love to hear some more tips. I need more tips for how to make God last in my day. The, I really like the idea of the gratitude journal, and I may put something together to, to, to push me towards that. Um, I, I like the idea of doing maybe a 31-day gratitude in December. Wouldn't that, that, that would get me going in the right direction. Uh, what are your suggestions? Please connect with me over at um, snarkyrainbows.com. If you have not yet grabbed your guide, your 90 days through the Bible guide, reading guide, jump on over to snarkyrainbows.com, click on one of the blog posts, and go down to the bottom of the page. You'll find the link there for getting your free guide. Or, if you want, you can purchase 90 days through the Bible study guide. You can purchase it on the website, or you can go to amazon.com and purchase it there. And I w that's going to take you through the Bible in 90 days. It is a great way to develop that habit of instilling the Word in your heart. Because what you put into your eyes and your ears are, is going to be what comes out of your mouth. It's going to be what grows up in your heart. It's going to be what drives your day. So be invested in the Word. And remember, we're putting God last. Find ways to make God the focus for the end of your day. I am Katherine Lang. Thank you so much for joining me for a growing hope where we are having fun, making friends, and finding ways to be relentlessly helpful. Connect with me on social media at Facebook. I am the Katherine C. Lang. Everywhere else, I am Katherine C. Lang. Until next time, remember, be blessed and be a blessing Thank you for joining us for Growing Hope with Katherine Lang, where we are sharing hope, encouragement, and inspiration to do more. Visit www.katherinelang.com to invite Katherine to be part of your event or to share your own stories of possibility living. Until next time, remember that a seed of hope planted and nurtured will grow up into a world of possibilities.